です。Hello, I'm Jacob Wicks. I'm a developer at A2J Tech. Today, I'm going to show you an example of how we develop large interviews. Uh, we do this by splitting up our interview files into multiple question files and by splitting up our output files into multiple output files and recombining them to create the final interview product. I'm going to show you how to split your question files by including other YAML files, and I'm going to show you how to split your output files by including sub-templates or by writing Python functions. I'm running docassemble in my desktop in the Docker program. You can find instructions on how to do that on the docassemble website. We'll be accessing the docassemble playground through the Chrome web browser here. We'll be doing code editing in Visual Studio Code and we'll be editing Word documents using Microsoft Word. Uh, so the example interview is going to ask the user what kind of fruit they have, output a Word document, and eventually ask them what kind of topping they like on their fruit. So let's go ahead and get started writing our first question. Uh, create a new YAML file that will contain the questions and we'll ask the user what kind of fruit they have. We'll assign their answer to the variable fruit which will be available to us later in the interview and when we go to create our output documents. This is our in-screen, which will just tell the user that they have whatever kind of fruit they told us they have. To run this code, we need to upload it to the playground, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, now you can see the code that we wrote in Visual Studio Code is in the playground and ready to run. So we run it, and it will tell us that we have a banana. Excellent. Now, let's add an output document to this. To create output documents using docassemble, um, you just need to create a Word document. So we'll go ahead and create a new Word document, call it fruit.docx, and open that up and get started. Uh, let's give ourselves nice big bold title here, the fruit template, and we will tell the user that the fruit is, and then to have docassemble add the value of their fruit answer, we put a tag into double curly brackets. So when docassemble reads this Word document, it knows to swap this out for the value of fruit. Um, to make that available to our interview, we need to upload that template. So let's go ahead and do that. Once that uploads successfully, it's available to include in our interview. So now we'll write the code that lets docassemble know that we've got an attachment file that we want to generate. So we'll tell it to look for fruit.docx and to generate it as both a PDF and a docx template file. So we've already uploaded fruit.yaml, so we can just navigate back to it, paste our code in, and run it. Now, when we tell it what kind of fruit we've got, it will bring us to the end screen and it will generate our output documents. Great. So what it's done, it's taken our answer, banana, it's gone into the template, and it's swapped it in there. That's just what we want. Now, let's ask the user some more questions. Let's ask the user what kind of toppings they like to put on their fruit. Um, when we're writing large interviews, when you have different 
uh, topics that you want to ask about, it's a lot better to split the code up into different files so that you can test each file on its own and also you can reuse code. So in the toppings.yaml file, I'm going to define a list of toppings that the user can choose from and I'm going to define a question that the interview will ask. So we'll ask the user, um, what kind of topping do you like on your fruit? And we'll assign their answer to the variable topping. We'll tell docAssemble that we want to see a drop-down menu and we'll display the um, We'll display the toppings as options there. So to make that toppings.yaml file available, we need to upload it. So go ahead and do that. Great. Now it's available to include in our interview. Um, so to include the question about toppings, we just tell document include toppings.yaml. Copy that code over into fruit.yaml. Save that. Now we can modify our fruit template um, because when we reach the end of the interview, the, the topping will be available to us. Okay, so um, we've added a tag here that tells docAssemble ask the user what kind of topping they want and paste that into the template. Um, last thing to do is upload the fruit, the new version of fruit.docx and run it. Okay, so now it'll ask us what kind of fruit we have. Uh, say we have a banana, and we like nuts on the banana. Now it'll generate our Word document, and we've got banana and nuts. So you see uh, we've got questions in two different files. Our toppings code is entirely separate from our fruit code, so it's it can be tested and reused um, in other components. Now, um, what if we want to split up our output code? That's a good idea uh, because you might have a complex interview where you want to talk about toppings in many different forms. So, one way to do this is to create a sub-template. So, to create a sub-template, um, we'll create a new Word document. We'll just call it subtemplate.docx. And it just has the same code, um, the topping is, and then the topping tag. Okay, so to make the subtemplate available, we will upload it to the playground. Great. Now we modify our original fruit template and let's just note that this is coming from a sub-template. So we'll give docAssemble a tag that lets it know that it should include a docx template. So we'll tell it to look for subtemplate.docx. Now, when we run our interview and we generate the fruit template, docAssemble will get down to here and it'll look for subtemplate.docx. It'll run subtemplate, put the topping in, and then paste the contents that subtemplate generated into our main template. 
So let's go ahead and upload that new version of fruit.docx and then we can go back to our interview and run it. We'll say we have an apple and we like caramel on it. There we go. We've got our content from the sub template in our main template. Um, so that's one way to split up your output files so that they can be uh, reused in different places because we could have more than one template that calls the toppings sub template. Um, the other way to do this is to write a Python function and call it from within our template. Um, so docassemble can run Python functions in, uh, in when it's creating word templates. So let's go ahead and write a Python function. So we'll create a new Python file, topping.py, and define the function topping output. Uh, we'll take topping as an argument and we'll return a formatted string. The topping is Topping. And then one of the neat things is you can add formatting using markdown. So we'll make topping bold by surrounding it with asterisks. Uh, docassemble will run this function. It'll get back the topping inside asterisks and then it will format it um, using the markdown. So topping will be bold. Um, to make that available, we need to upload the Python module, uh, topping.py. So we'll upload that and let docassemble restart itself. Um, while it's doing that, let's modify our main template here. And instead of pulling it from the template, we'll say we're pulling it from the Python function. and we'll give docassemble the code that it needs. So we'll call the topping output function and pass it the value of the variable topping that the user entered. And then we'll tell it that it's gonna have some markdown and it needs to parse that. That's what that tag does. So we'll save fruit.docx here. Great, our module uploaded, so that's ready to be included in the interview. Um, we'll go back, we'll upload our new version of the template that we just wrote, and finally we will include the Python module in our interview so that it will be available um, when we go to generate the document. So we just tell docassemble that we've got a Python module that we want to include. So we include the, the topping module, copy that into the playground. Now when the fruit.yaml interview runs, it's going to grab the topping Python module, ask about the fruit, it'll grab the toppings YAML file, so it can ask about the topping question, it'll generate our new version of fruit.docx, run that Python function to get the output text, um, and give us our document. So, let's say we have an apple, and we've got cheese on the apple. Now it's generated a Word document, and the fruit is apple, and from our Python fu function, we get the topping is cheese. Um, so those are the two ways to split up your output, func your output files into multiple uh, files uh, that you can reuse and test individually, which is really nice. Uh, the other great thing about Python functions is, of course, you can write unit tests uh, to test them so you can be sure that you're getting you know, the right output uh, that you want. That's it for today. I hope you found this video helpful.